Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here, and welcome back to a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where we learn just a little bit of deep learning and a whole lot of Keras. Uh, today we're going over a lot. Uh, we're going over initializers, uh, activations, uh, regularizers, and constraints. Uh, so, so oh boy, the models you'll be able to make, or layers you'll be able to make after this one. So if you're ready, um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so all of these uh, functions that we have here, they all have to do with making layers uh, bigger and better, making layers great again. Um, so for example, if we check out what's inside this dense layer, um, one second, using, using our secret magic question function. Oh boy, we've got a lot. So this layer has an activation. This is, is the activation that will be uh, applied after the layer. Uh, use bias, so this will uh, bias true or not. The kernel initializer, the bias initializer, the kernel regularizer, the bias regularizer, the activity regularizer, the kernel constraint, the bias constraint, and keyword args, a whole lot of stuff. So notice that layers, in fact, uh, deal with the majority of this type of stuff. They deal with the initializers, they deal with the regularizers, they deal with the constraints, and they deal a little teeny tiny bit with the initializers. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead. Um, so notice uh, I, can, I can go ahead and, and use initializers for any variable that we have. So, so notice inside a dense layer we have the state. The state is encapsulated by uh, the, the variables, the, the weights. We have two weights. We have the bias and the kernel. And we can initialize them with different types of initializers. We've got the Lacoon uniform and the ones initializer. Um, I guess I guess you guys might be curious to um, to see that. The unfortunate part is you can't see that unless unless we make actually an import. Uh, so from uh, care, uh, who cares? This this is this is completely useless. So there's there's tons of different ways to initialize variables. Um, uh, this is initialization is incredibly important because we're dealing with uh, a non-convex optimization, which is generally true with all of deep learning. Uh, so this means if you are initialized in a particular location, you, you can perhaps get to a, a better optimum than if you were initialized in a different location. So finding the best ways to initialize the weights and layers is super important. Um, uh, there's a ton of, of different types of initializers. Um, so, uh, so for example, here, this is a constant initializer. So instead of having it all be ones, I can make it all be sevens. Um, there's, there's a ton more. So if, if we were to go down here, there's we've got constant, the uh, glorat normal, the h normal, the identity, the blah blah blah, ton, tons of tons of these, and it really just depends. It depends on your model, on which initializer that you want to use. Uh, a lot of these have uh, papers that actually go ahead and back them. So Lacoon Uniform has a paper that goes ahead and backs it and says why this is a really good initializer. Um, generally speaking, I just go with the default initializer. All of these layers come with a default initializer. That's generally speaking pretty damn good. Uh, excuse my language. Uh, so it's pretty good for for most things that you're going to be looking at. Um, uh, in, in addition to this, you can go ahead and you can make your own uh, initializer. So for example, I can make a, a normal, a random normal initializer. Uh, the only thing that it takes is a shape and a data type, and it just needs to return, um, uh, you know, a you know, a weight vector of, of, of that particular shape and and uh, and data type, so so that's that's an initializer. So this is very specifically deals with the weights of layers. Um, activations. So activations are operations that you apply after uh, your layer transformations are done. Uh, a very uh, super. You you may have heard of the sigmoid activation function. This is used as the link function in uh, logistic regression. Um, Another one that you might have heard of is the is the ReLU function, which is super popular. It's a rectified linear unit, um, and these are basically just just functions that you can apply to them. Um, generally, these will um, uh, limit the range of these functions. So in this case, a sigmoid will, will limit you between zero and one. A tanh between uh, negative one and one. A ReLU positive. Um, so we'll generally do this. Uh, activations are almost always nonlinear. Um, and when we go over uh, activations in, in the context of the history of deep learning, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a lot more about There's There's a deep history to activations. There's a little bit of history to, to um, initializers, but there's a pretty good history to activations and why these are important. 
Um, okay, so um, again, you can you can make an activation, so you can add this as its own layer. So this is kind of cool. This can be its own separate part by saying activation. It's it's a layer itself, and you can, there's plenty of names that you can use. Uh, and of course, some layers themselves, like dense, will have an activation inside of them. Uh, so you can go ahead and you can do that. Um, you can also just pass in a, a, a TensorFlow activation function. So like TanH is a specific TensorFlow activation function. There's, there's some advanced ones as well. That's activation functions. So we, we can customize our layer pretty well now. Um, there's, there's a couple of other things. Uh, the two more we're going to be talking about is regularizers and constraints. So regularizers, um, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this in, in Scikit-Learn. Uh, so uh, L1 and L2 regularization are the principal things that we dealt with. Uh, and we're going to be talking a lot about this in, in the, uh, the, the intro to data science, the real intro to data science tutorial where you don't, don't just learn a little bit of data science, you actually learn data science and machine learning. So we'll talk about a lot about regularization. Uh, regularization is important because it uh, makes your model generalize better. So you can always fit your data. Uh, especially in deep models, you can you can fit your data really well. That means you can do really well in the train set, but you can't always do well in the test set. And so regularizers help you do that. Um, so there's a ton of regularizers that you can use. You can apply them to different places. You can apply them to the kernel. Uh, so in this case, I can apply L2 regularization. We all know what that is from from Scikit-Learn. Um, so this means we take the weights in the kernel, we square them, and then we can apply L1 regularization to the biases, or we can even apply it to the activity. This means to the output of the layer. Um, so there you go. So a kernel, a bias, an activity re uh, regularizer. Uh, uh, the layers dense convolution, COM2, COM3 all have this API. Um, there's a couple uh, regularizers that we have. You've got L1, L2, and then L1 and L2. Um, in addition, you can make a custom regularizer. So you can take the absolute value, you can sum by some amount, and you can multiply by some weird amount. Hoorah. The final thing that you can do is you can add activity regularization to any layer. Um, so in this case, um, uh, this this will apply regularization. So it, it adds the cost as, as a regularizer adds to the cost. Just just to, so you can apply um, a regularization to any layer in in your in your function. So in this case, I can take the output of an LSTM and apply activity regularization on it. So we don't want like super high um, activations. Um, the one thing that's important here to note is that um, if this activity regularizer does not lie on the path from your input to the output, it's like over on the side, it's not going to count. It's not going to happen. In addition, there's something I think a little goofy here is that you can't, it's hard to see the loss that you incur from regularization. There will be if you have something. Um, so, so in this case, if you do have regularization, there will be a total loss term, a total loss term, as well as a regular loss term. Um, the total loss term will include all the loss from regularization. So, so anyways, so that's that's regularization. That's how you add it in. You can add it specifically into the weights and the biases by by adding the kernel and bias regularizer on on layers that have this stuff. Um, and you can also add it to activations to any layer by using the the activity regularization. Uh, layer itself. It's a layer. Um, okay. We'll talk about constraints, and then we'll do one little extra thing. Okay. So constraints. This is kind of simple. Um, so there's, there's really not too much. So uh, constraints are saying like, hey, I want specific things to only be between blah and blah. Um, so for example, I've got a non-negative constraint. This will constrain all of my weights to be non-negative. I have a unit norm constraint. This will mean the um, the uh, force of the matrix to have a unit norm along a specific axis. Um, so, so yeah, there's there's some constraints you can add to the weights, and this this can be somewhat useful. I've I've not used this yet. I I, I won't lie to you guys, um, but I do know specific models that require this, especially having um, a, a unit norm. Um, so so you can, you can you can go ahead and do this, and this is only works for particular layers. Now. What if there's a layer that you want to have all of this? You want it to have a constraint. You want it to have a weight regularization. You want it to have all of this. It's super close to a layer that's already in there, but you want it to have more. Well, the good news is you can put it all together and you can build your own layer with all of this fun stuff. Um, so how do you do it? 
So the init that's the init here, it's going to be the exact same thing. Don't touch that. But you'll notice we had this add weight before. And if you add a weight, anytime you add a weight to a model, you've got all extra, you've got tons of extra stuff. You've got a constraint. You can add a constraint to the weight. You can add initializers to the weight. You can add regularizers to the weight. Um, so, so that's that's basically how you do it. Um, uh, the, the one thing that you will need to know is you cannot, you know, quote unquote, constrain the activity, the, the outputs. Uh, that being said, you can always um, you can always normalize them yourself afterwards. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you want to add constraints, regularizers, extra stuff to weights that, that aren't already built in, so dense has it already built in, uh, then you can make your own layer, uh, as we were talking about before. However, if you just want to add regularization at the end of a layer, if you want to add activation at the end of another layer, you can just go ahead and tack on an activation layer or an activity regularization layer. Um, so so that, that's it. That's, that's kind of the entire thing. I can run this just to, to prove that it runs. Um, so, so you should be able to make incredibly complicated layers now. Um, uh, you, you can think of any function that you can imagine. So you, you're just imagining like, hey, I want the unit circle. It's like, that's, that's the function that I want. I'm going to take in like degrees and I'm going to spit out this. And then I want to multiply it by, so I, so I want to raise the intensity at specific parts of the unit circle by some sort of kernel. And you want this kernel to be initialized in a particular way. You want it to be uh, uniformly or constantly initialized. And then you want it to be constrained to not be too big, right? So you constrain it to be unit norm. And then you also want to say that, hey, um, I mean, it's, that is kind of be weird, but you want to say like, hey, I, I want, I don't want it, there to be too spiky of areas on on, my, on the weights of this on this like uh, circle transformation. So you can you can do all of that. Um, if anyone has a particular layer that they would they, they have seen in a research paper and would like to see implement it, please go ahead and ping me. Um, this is this is fun. I love to do this stuff. Otherwise, I would have no idea what to do on the weekend. Um, okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, uh, this this is this is like you now know layers. You can make like very complex layers now. There are things that um, I have uh, that are hard uh, to go over uh, that are really hard to do in Keras. So particularly, I've done a research project where I've looked into um, uh, getting getting the gradient of, of these layers and then back proper uh, or, or and changing the back propagation function slightly. This is this is very hard. Uh, I'm not showing you how to do this. This will this is like high intermediate to advanced level comprehension of layers. Uh, we're not going into like uh, expert master level. So okay, as always, it's always a pleasure, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh,